Hello guys, this is Trinity Storm here and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to tell you about what if Naruto gain an evolution bloodline. If you enjoy this video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. Naruto ran as fast as his small legs would allow. He hoped he could get away from the mob long enough for someone to come to his aid. But the crowd today has never shrunk. Instead, it expanded. Why? Why does it always have to be me? Why do they cause me pain? I didn't cause any harm. The great Kiyubi chuckled darkly inside Naruto. I've been imprisoned by this stupid mortal for a long time. I'll be free soon. I'll be free soon. You, human scum, will not perish. Oh no. I have a much harsher fate in store for you. He 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 he. Finally, Naruto was trapped in a dead end, and the mob surrounded him. Naruto considered himself fortunate to have passed out after only one hour of torture. A look inside Naruto's mind. Huh? What am I doing? Is my life over? No way, Ninjin. No, you are not. But you'll soon wish you were. What? What is your name? After seeing these huge, bloodthirsty eyes, a trembling Naruto asked. Me? Ninjin, ha 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 you make me laugh. You must be even dumber than I thought. I am the powerful KYUBI no Kitsun. What? That's... That's unthinkable. Yandaimi assassinated you. H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A H A as if a ninja like him could ever stop me. He simply encased me in you. Take a look at the seal fool. I'm finally free because of these idiots. Oh, don't look so scared. You will not perish. I. I won't. Obviously not. That would be gracious of me. No, you will not die. Instead, I'll consume your soul and force you to watch as I destroy everything you cherish. No. No. I'm not going to let it happen. As if you could possibly avoid it, fool. I am the Lord of the Demons. The Lord of the Demons. It will be simple to defeat a child like you. Feel my fury now. Kiyubi slashed through the seal, striking Naruto and knocking him against a wall. See the foolish child? You cannot defeat me in the material or mental worlds. Especially in your own mind. It. It hurts so much. Why do I have to suffer like this? Why? Can't I? Naruto then noticed four figures appear in front of him. Iruka stepped out and said, Try your best Naruto. Recalling the first time he taught him how to shape chakra. Tuchi and Ayame took a step forward and said, Naruto-kun, hurry up. Don't be scared. You'll do fantastic. Encouraging him, such as the first time he told them he was going to the ninja academy. Serutobi stepped out last, smiling gently and saying, don't abandon Naruto-kun. I have faith in you. As he consoled Naruto after he failed an exam, he smoked his pipe. Naruto remembered everything his precious people had done for him. All the strength they had bestowed upon him. And determination began to show in his eyes. Ha 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 human blunder. What are your options? I will devour you and annihilate everything. I will especially torment that stupid old man and the daughter of the ramen shop you adore. You will witness their torment. I will annihilate everything you care about. No. I am not giving up. Because this is my ninja method. Fuck you, dumb fox. Do you want to fight? You will get one by Kami. Naruto yelled. The world around them abruptly changed. The sewer had vanished. They were now on the summit of a mountain, surrounded by lightning. Kiyubi was taken aback by the change. He had not anticipated this. Naruto, on the other hand, 
remembered something told to him by a man named Inoichi. Sada. No naka da, kor wa or no kokura. Kami no basho wa or da. That's all. This location exists only in my mind. This place belongs to me. Anime wa zet akiramin. Make an or wa zet. T-A-O-S-U. Or wa ome. Naruto yelled, I will not give up. I will not be defeated. I will success. What do you think you can do, stupid human? Kiyubi still didn't understand what Naruto had learned. Simply put, you stupid fox. He is God in this place. Everything is possible in this place if he so desires, as a man appeared, a new voice spoke up. He wore a Junin vest, had golden hair, and blue eyes. He wore a flame-styled cloak and appeared to be an older, more mature Naruto. Hello there, Naruto. My name is Minato Namikaze, in case you didn't recognize me. Yandaimi's Hokage. We'll talk about it further later. Now go smack that stupid fox. Okay. Come on, you fox. Let's fight. Naruto exclaimed as he grew in size and created a sword of light in his hand. The demon and the child fought and tore at each other. Kiyubi tore into Naruto again and again, but he couldn't kill the child. He gradually realized he had failed. He could easily have escaped, but his pride demanded that he punish the impudent child. And there was no turning back after starting such a fight. It was either all or nothing. And in the end, he received nothing. Naruto began absorbing the Kiyubi after the titanic battle ended. Yandaimi ran to his aid. Congratulations, Naruto. Should I say, son? Serutobi may not have told you, but you are my son, and you have made me proud. Not only by defeating the demon, but also by remaining pure in the face of these insane villagers. I never imagined it would come to this, my son. I assumed they'd regard you as a hero. The reason the old man never told you was to keep you safe from my enemies. Sai asterisk, son, my time is running out. I am delighted to have seen you. Dad, I'm the same way. Thank you for your support. Naruto hugged his father. Naruto collapsed to his knees, gasping. Son. What's the problem? Way. Too. Much. The Kiyubi's power is excessive. I. Can't. Control myself. A A A A A A R G H. No. No. Son. Please wait. It's fine, Dad. I believe I require the return of the fox. Don't be concerned. You'll notice. After all, I am God in this place. Kiyubi was restored as the light shone. What? What occurred? Kiyubi is straightforward. I still require your assistance. Your power is beyond my ability to contain. Not now, and never again. Your knowledge and memories would have enraged me on their own. As a result, I brought you back. Here's the deal, Fox. You will no longer be consumed by bloodlust. You will keep your previous existence and will now protect me and my children. You will teach and mentor them as they live a kind life. You will protect them by giving them your chakra. In exchange, you will not die unless my other child is still alive. Naruto's words were etched into the Kiyubi's soul as he spoke. Kiyubi's bloodlust had faded. He was now connected to Naruto and could see and feel the world through him. Thus, the Lord of Demons felt something new. Pure compassion and kindness. Do I really have much of a choice now? Nonetheless, I agree. Even if I wanted to, I can't get out. Kiyubi, thank you. Yoroshiku. Yoroshiku, it's a pleasure to work with you. Can you do anything about this place, Kit? It's better than the sewer, but I'd rather have a forest. And some game to catch. Perhaps a vixen or three. In exchange, I'll give you a gift. Why not? 
here you have it. And the world transformed once more into a lush forest with a lake. Small game ran around, and a female fox approached. Thank you, Kit. Here's my present. A summoning scroll for my demon clan. Sign it, but don't call them without thinking. While some are nice, many are like my old self and may refuse to obey you. Please let me know if you require anything else. I'll take care of you now that we're partners. Said Dad. It's been nice meeting you. Even if I'm a little angry about the whole thing. But I'll deal with it. That's my son, he he he. For what it's worth, son. I apologize. But I didn't have a choice. After all, who else would I trust besides my own son? As he ruffled Naruto's hair, the Yandaimi said. Kiyubi couldn't help but butt in a barely audible whisper, ah. So cute. I'm going to puke. Of course, the two blondes overheard him and laughed. Naruto gave his father one last hug before Yandaimi vanished into nothingness. Kid I believe it is past time to awaken. I'll create a mental link so we can talk more easily. Oh, and did you know you were kind of stupid before? And had poor control? That was, after all, my fault. Even the seal couldn't stop me completely. So I screwed you over in order to weaken you. Then you'd have to invoke my power and possibly set me free. But, as our last fight demonstrated, I'll never be able to leave. Let's make it as comfortable as possible. In any case, I'll return your mind to its original state and repair your control. There's something else as well. Your physical body was altered as a result of the chakra that was released. I'm not sure to what extent. We'll have to investigate after you wake up. Kit, you're off now. Thank you, Q. I'll see you later, eh? Naruto awoke in a plain white room, lying on a bed. An IV drop hung from his arm. A sleeping Aruka sat in front of him, watching over the child he adored. Naruto slowly regained arm movement and looked around. He examined his body for the changes mentioned by Kiyubi. He mentally summoned the fox. Hello there, furball. Nothing is wrong with me. So it appears. Have you figured out anything on your side? No kit. But something is definitely different. Better get some rest while I investigate further. If I find out, I'll let you know in the morning. Okay. I guess I'll go back to sleep. Naruto fell asleep once more. Naruto awoke early in the morning, still lying in his hospital bed. Wake up, Q. Did you discover anything? Only a few things. You are aware that my chakra is toxic to humans, correct? With me sealed inside and all, you may have developed a resistance to it, but it is not immunity. The issue now is that my chakra has destabilized your DNA. If my assumptions are correct, your conscious mind can control your unstable DNA. In other words, you might be able to change your shape. What I did notice is a seemingly limitless capacity for evolution. This means that as you get older and more experienced, you will be able to change your shape in a variety of ways. It also appears to have enhanced your natural healing ability. Another advantage is that it responds to external stimuli. Let me explain before you start acting strange. Your muscles get stronger when you make an exerting motion, right? That's how you practice. In your case, however, the improvement is hundreds of times faster, and from what I can tell, the capacity is far, far greater than that of any human. The more you practice, the faster you'll get stronger. Furthermore, while humans have a maximum strength, your maximum is many times greater than anyone I've met. Your bones are also much denser, and your skin is more difficult to pierce. To put it simply, whatever does not kill you makes you stronger. In a literal sense. The last thing I discovered is that it functions similarly to a keke jenke. You, like me, will pass it down to your children. Kit, on the other hand. 
Perhaps we should seal myself in this new Keke Jenke so that your kits don't summon my chakra carelessly. I was thinking about keeping the seal on them until they were 12 years old. On the same note, I will be able to keep the seal so that any black sheep who emerge will not be able to abuse your Keke Jenke. So you're saying I'll be able to get really strong and fast, as well as change my shape depending on what I want to do. How do I go about doing that? Try concentrating on it. I'd recommend turning your hands into claws. I'll assist you and keep an eye on what happens in your body. It's also a good idea not to call on my chakra for a while. While your resistance has grown, it's best not to risk it unless it's really bad, okay? Alright, so I concentrate on my hands turning into claws. Let's wait and see. Narut focused on his hands changing into claws. He'd already decided on his look. His fingers would be longer, and instead of nails, he would have black claws 30 centimeters long. He was able to shift them slowly but steadily after focusing and receiving advice from Kyubi. Okay, Kit, you did it. The transition was painfully slow, owing primarily to your lack of knowledge. It will be much easier and faster the next time. Change them back and wait for your teacher. We'll have to explain ourselves. You're correct. Gigi must be aware of this and our agreement. I just hope he doesn't take it too personally. Naruto returned his claws to normal and gently awoke Aruka. He requested Sandame after telling him he was fine. After a short while, the elderly Hokage entered the room, visibly concerned. He asked Aruka to go outside after hugging his figurative grandson. Could you please put up a sound barrier, Gigi? I don't want anyone to hear me. Oh, and I believe you should contact the blonde-haired man who assisted me the last time. I believe his name was Inoichi. The one that stuck with me. I can, Naruto-kun, but why should I? Because it's about my tenant on Gigi. What? How did you find out about him? I ran into him. I'll tell you about it, but could you please invite Inoichi-san over? You won't believe what I'm about to tell you unless he's here. Hum. All right, Naruto-kun, I'll do it. Can you just stay here? The Sandame then left and summoned Inoichi. The Hokage looked surprised as the blonde mindwalker entered. Will you tell me and Inoichi why you need us here, Naruto-kun? Gee-san, as soon as you secure this room. I don't want anyone learning before it's time. Naruto told them about his fight with Kiyubi after the aged Hokage applied the seals. The biggest surprise, however, was when he told them about his parents. The expression on Inoichi's face in particular was incredible. Naruto asked Inoichi to enter his mind at the end of the story to confirm this. Inoichi looked too shaken to speak when he returned from his journey inside Naruto's mind. A. A friendly and kind Kiyubi. Kami I never expected to see that. While I'm glad you made it and proud that you remembered what I told you about your mindscape, Naruto. What the hell were you thinking when you entered that fight? I know it wasn't entirely your fault, but was there anything you could have done to avoid it? I'm sorry, Inoichi-san. I couldn't do it. Once such a battle begins, it will not end until one of the two is defeated and devoured. Now I have something else to tell you. Aside from Kiyubi becoming my Keke Jenke, I also acquired another one. It is because of him, but not because of him. My body has become unstable as a result of Kiyubi's chakra. My strength, speed, agility, and reflexes will all improve much more quickly. Also I will heal much faster than before. According to Kiyubi, unless you rip out my heart, decapitate me, or subject me to constant heavy trauma, I am virtually unkillable. Apart from the pain, I can take a sword through the lungs and not even slow down. Another cool feature is the ability to change my form. I was able to make claws out of my hands, probably because Kiyubi had claws as well, so it was fairly simple. I'm not sure what else I can do. Kiyubi also stated that it will be passed down to any children I have. He also suggested hiding them. 
Consider a baby summoning Kiyubi's chakra as a result of not being fed on time. He stated, unless the Kiyubi wills it earlier or if Kiyubi deems a child unworthy of it, the release will be at the age of 12. You now have two Keke Jenkes, and Kiyubi is friendly. Now I have to inform the council. No. That's why I didn't want anyone to find out. I believe you too, but what about the rest of the council? No way. They'll most likely force me to marry as many girls as they want and then take my children away from me so they can control me. Sin no. Gee San, don't tell anyone. Just give me a new apartment because my old one was burned down last night, some chakra scrolls, and keep it low. I don't want anyone finding out about what happened. Tell them that after beating an idiot with a mask with a root kanji on it, I used a chakra-infused blade on my seal, nearly freeing the Kiyubi. My willpower was the only thing that kept it in. Inform them that the seal has been damaged and cannot be repaired. It should scare them away from attacking me again for fear of the seal breaking, which isn't far from the truth. Aside from that, it'll give you leverage against that crippled guy, Danzo was his name? Yeah, if they hear that it was M.E. who stopped the Kiyubi from leveling this place, and that it still is, maybe some of them will shut up. Also, don't tell them about my parents just yet. They'll just try to take advantage of me, and I don't have your patience, old man. Could you also point me in the direction of an abandoned training ground? I'd like to get stronger. Much more powerful. So that no one else has to go through what I did. Both men were taken aback by the child's declaration, but they accepted it as true. Inoichi excused himself and left, mostly thinking about how to get his daughter to stop chasing after the Uchiha and see that there are people much, much better out there. Sandame, for his part, went to apply the seals on Naruto, as well as show him and Kiyubi how to do so. Naruto then left with Serutobi to get the scrolls, a key to his new apartment, and directions to his new training grounds. Unsurprisingly, Naruto's new apartment was close to Sandame's. Few people would dare to go there, so it was much safer. Naruto received some scrolls on basic chakra control, which he sucked at because no one taught him how to read or write. Sandame then left with Naruto to show him his new training grounds behind Hokage Mountain. When Naruto arrived, he formed his claws and displayed them to an astonished Hokage. These are my claws, I explain. Isn't that cool? They're also quite sharp. But I need to practice on them. It takes some concentration for me to make them, but I'll try to shorten the time. Kiyubi also stated that he will assist me in improving my fighting abilities. In any case, start training. Naruto then began a series of exercises at Kiyubi's command. Sandame returned to his office after watching Naruto train for a while, somewhat relieved that Naruto would now grow stronger. He wrote a letter in his office and summoned a carrier monkey to deliver it to his old student Jiraiya. After that, he returned to his old foe, paperwork, and began his work. Naruto, for his part, began practicing how to form other things after completing his warm-up. After consulting with Kiyubi, he discovered that he had reached his limit of potential changes. However, the more he practiced and grew older, the greater his potential became. In other words, with only his claws and no other abilities, he would have to work hard to gain any new abilities. Naruto, never one to shirk from practice or take anything for granted, got to work. After some time, he considered changing his face and shape. Making some sort of disguise. Naruto spent the rest of his evolution potential on being able to switch between his normal, blue-eyed blonde whiskered form and his disguise, a dark-haired, brown-eyed boy his age. This way, he could finally enter a store without people attempting to kill him at every opportunity. Kiyubi made a discovery after a few days of this routine. Naruto could absorb the DNA of other beings by eating them. This accelerated Naruto's evolutionary potential slightly, but only in terms of abilities related to what he consumed. If he absorbed a bird's DNA, he would improve his evolutionary abilities, but only when it came to forming clawed feet, wings, or, in some cases, improved eyesight. 
Naruto vowed never to absorb a human's DNA because doing so required the victim to be freshly killed and eaten raw. He could stomach eating an animal if absolutely necessary, but a human? No way, no how. So Naruto went to the academy in the mornings and trained on his own in the afternoons. Even his pranks became less frequent, though they never completely vanished. Naruto, for his part, heeded Kyuubi's advice to develop non-combat abilities. His first priority was to get some wings and possibly improve his vision. Of course, Naruto spent a lot of time in his disguise, when he was outside the academy and the training grounds, because no one recognized or attacked him. It was especially entertaining to start a prank as Naruto and then escape the area in his transformed form. Even Kyuubi praised him for the brilliance of some of the pranks. Naruto's briefing of the Hokage on his shape-changing abilities was one of the best. By abruptly changing in front of him, the poor old man nearly died of a heart attack. He relaxed a little after being reassured that Kyuubi was constantly monitoring Naruto's body for negative effects. Naruto also changed his clothes. Now he wore either black and red, Kyuubi's primary colors, or black and dark orange. He continued to pick on people in front of their eyes, retaining his previous exuberant behavior. When he tried using Genjutsu on him one day, one of his favorites was Mizuki. Mizuki applied a Genjutsu seal on Naruto's paper when he handed it to him. Naruto laughed loudly after seeing through it with Kiyubi's help, attracting the attention of Iruka and Mizuki. Naruto responded when asked what was wrong. Wow, Mizuki-sensei. You've sealed my test with a Genjutsu seal. Obviously, you want to test my ability to anticipate the impossible, correct? Who could possibly expect Genjutsu on a test? Congratulations, Mizuki-sensei. That almost got me. Also, great exercise. I will request this become part of your teaching so we remain on our toes. What a brilliant idea. Of course, Mizuki was fuming on the inside while attempting not to attack the arrogant boy and instead congratulating Naruto on seeing through his ruse. Iruka, on the other hand, was surprised and inquired about it, to which Naruto replied, if you can trick your friends, you can trick anyone, and that's what he did. Some people asked Naruto how he improved so quickly, to which he replied, a shinobi's best friend is deception. I've misled you into thinking I'm an idiot when I'm not. Didn't anyone think about the possibility of me holding back? Similarly to Shino. My true level is far higher than any of you. I simply chose to conceal it for a time. However, due to certain events, I no longer hold back. This is my true self. You can take it or leave it. Ya nay. Before leaping to the rooftops, leaving many wondering who Naruto was. Naruto's life was generally good and improving. And he enjoyed it. Almost five years have passed since Naruto discovered his new abilities. He never stopped honing his bloodline or his ninja abilities. He was able to not only keep up with, but also outperform everyone else thanks to Kiyubi. Even though Kiyubi fixed the intentional mess he made of Naruto's chakra coils, Naruto still had an excessive amount of chakra in him, making control his greatest weakness. However, Thanks to Kiyubi, he was able to learn tree walking and water walking in order to assist. His genjutsu still sucked, but thanks to Kiyubi's interference, it was extremely difficult to fool him. His ninjutsu were also relatively low in comparison to clan members, as Kiyubi never used chakra for ninjutsu. He preferred direct chakra manipulation, which was impossible to achieve with human chakra. Naruto's bloodline had also improved, as he now possessed three new abilities. His favorite ability was his ability to create bat wings from his back, allowing him to glide for short distances, despite Kiyubi's prediction that it would only be a matter of time before he evolved them again and gained true flight. Naruto rarely wore anything heavier than a muscle t-shirt as a result, much to the delight and embarrassment of a certain Hyuga girl. Naruto has also had two, Dujutsu, for a long time. 
they were dujutsu only because they altered his vision. The first he used sparingly, mostly because he didn't need it. It was the ability to transform his vision into that of an eagle. Even though his eyesight improved dramatically as a result of this, he developed telescopic vision when he focused on something. Reading Sandame's Icha Icha books from the comfort of his own home and then reciting them to the aged Hokage, preferably with the other perv named Kakashi, was one of his favorite pastimes with this. This has also resulted in more than a few beatings for the poor perv by Anko, who believed he was teaching such perverse literature to a child. Naruto's other dujutsu was thermal sight, which allowed him to see through walls and was extremely useful for someone as paranoid as Naruto. During his time at the academy, he resisted almost everything except taijutsu. Why? Because the Uchiha was always challenging him and promptly being beaten to the ground. For the first time, not even Kiyubi could answer Naruto's question about whether Sasuke was a gay masochist. Of course, when Naruto said this aloud, it took all of Kiyubi's healing abilities to keep Naruto from dying at the hands of fangirls. In his spare time, Naruto enjoyed flying above Konoha, he's actually gliding, but with his strength in jumps, it takes so long to land again that it appears to be flight, and watching the busy streets. This was a habit he developed a few years ago. Rewind two years and three months. Naruto was overjoyed. He'd finally mastered thermal vision. He was currently taking a walk along the roofs. He could easily look around him because the buildings were warm, even though it was currently night. Meanwhile, Anko was staggering home after a night of drinking with her friend Kurenai. That is, until some hands appeared from the shadows and grabbed her, dragging her into a narrow alleyway. The person who grabbed her violently hit her head against the wall, further dizzying the drunk Junin. Then he threw her against the wall, and a male voice said. If it isn't the devoted snake bitch. Hey, and she refers to herself as a Konoha shinobi. You're just a tool for the traitor Orochimaru. You'll die today, bitch, and we'll be heroes. But not before we have a good time with you. It would be such a waste not to enjoy your body. Ha ha ha. The man then attempted to rip her clothes off. Keyword experimented with because a small shadow landed in front of him as soon as he took a step forward. The figure appeared to have golden blonde hair and striking blue eyes in the dim moonlight. Eyes so filled with rage and hatred that would-be rapists had to take a step back. It was obvious that it was a child, but these eyes. These eyes were as cold as the peak of a mountain in winter and as hard as diamonds. Naruto was rarely angry. He wasn't angry even when he was beaten as a child. He was mostly depressed or terrified. But now. He was enraged. Emotions that had not been felt in a long time surfaced. He was filled with rage and wrath he never expected to feel. His mind flashed back to the beatings and hatred he had suffered. Even Kiyubi within him yearned for the blood of these beasts. Naruto summoned his claws almost unconsciously. There is only one punishment for what you were about to do. Death. Naruto charged the men in an instant. Their leader didn't realize why he was in so much pain in his lungs until he noticed that the child's claws had ripped open his torso, ripping out his lungs and intestines with them. As he fell, he could only mumble the one thought that came to mind. D. Demon. This word adequately described Naruto's appearance to the others. His eyes, covered in blood but otherwise unaltered, appeared to be two damning orbs ready to unleash heavenly judgment on them. Survival instincts took over, and they attempted to charge the demon in order to kill it. Fools. A massacre was taking place right in front of Anko's eyes. Naruto jumped, dodged, parried, and weaved through the men's blows with the grace of a fox. He rolled under the man, ducking under a kanai thrust, rising in an uppercut slice, cutting the man to ribbons. Turning around, he parried a pipe with his left hand before stabbing its owner through the heart. He jumped over the two remaining thugs and, in a display of acrobatic skill, turned upside down in the air and rotated his body, lashing out with his claws at the men's heads, taking out the rapist attempting to flee. 
He landed in the only exit to the dead end and locked eyes with the last thug before charging him, claws open at the sight. He sidestepped the terrified man's stabbing motion with timed precision, pivoted on his left leg while simultaneously lowering his body, essentially making a small spin with him sitting on his left leg. During that spin, he lashed out with his claws, ripping out the man's right leg, causing him to collapse in agony. The fight, if that's what you want to call it, lasted less than a minute. Anko's eyes blinked. WTF the fuck? Her inebriation had vanished as a result of the shock. Naruto retracted his claws and turned to face her. The last man sighed. Naruto approached him, took up the pipe, and smashed it against the man's jaw, last knee, arms, and genitals. The first was not to report what had occurred. He couldn't get away because the next two were so close. The last was rape punishment. Anko looked at the child, slightly terrified. Until he saw his own eyes. His eyes softened as the battle excitement faded. He gave her a worried look. Are you hurt, miss? Wha? No. Not a lot. Who are you? Who are you? Miss Konoha's resident demon brat. Allow me to bind this jerk so he doesn't bleed to death, and I'll take you to the hospital. Naruto then removed the man's shirt and bandaged the wound. Needless to say, he wasn't very nice to her. He offered his hand to the downed Anko, who was slowly trying to get up. Miss, come on. The hospital is nearby. It will not be missed. Anko here. Anko Midarashi keep that in mind, brat. All right, Anko-san. Let's go. He took off in her bridal gown, leaving Anko staring at the raw strength he seemed to possess. He took her inside after landing safely in front of the hospital, where she was admitted. It was then that she discovered his name was Uzumaki Naruto. It wasn't until later that night that Sandame paid her a visit and explained a few things to her that she realized who he was. What about Naruto? He returned home after taking an anbu to secure the wounded man and clear the scene of the massacre. Only then did he realize the full scope of what he had done. Naruto cried for hours over his lost innocence, but thankfully he had Kiyubi to console him. Serutobi did, however, pay him a visit at some point to give him a human perspective on killing. Flashback concludes. Naruto found a new friend in Anko, who visited him and helped him train ever since. Both were considered outcasts by the people they tried to protect, but they found a friend in each other. Apart from Sandame, she was the only one who knew the extent of Naruto's abilities. She also told him about Kurinai's ambition to join a scouting team. It was just a few weeks before finals. Apart from the stupid Bunshin Jutsu, Naruto had few problems. It was clear why he was having trouble thanks to Kiyubi, but he didn't know how to fix it because he had never used ninjutsu of any kind. Naruto had arrived at Sandame's office. He was curious as to where he would be assigned. He walked past the secretary and into the aged Hokage's office as soon as he arrived in his disguise, which he had named Uryu. Hokage-sama, hello. Can I speak with you privately? Uryu-kun, of course. Anbu. Please leave us alone. He then erected a sound barrier in the room before asking, Well now, Naruto-kun, what is it? You see, I was wondering where I would be placed on Gigi. I learned a few things thanks to Anko. I was considering putting you in Kakashi's squad. He will have the highest scoring Uchiha and Kunoichi. Yeah, I'm not joining the squad with the emo jerk. I'll kill him if you put me there. I'm not going there, no matter what the council says. However, Kakashi is Yandaimi's student. He will undoubtedly teach you a great deal. Maybe. But most likely not. The council wields far too much power, Gigi. I also know how lazy he is. No, I'd prefer a different teacher. And I know who it is. Is that correct, Naruto-kun? And why should I, the Hokage, listen to you, an academy student? 
Sandane, of course, intended to listen to Naruto, but he also enjoyed prodding him in conversations. Kami was well aware that he was one of the very few people in Konoha who could actually hold an intelligent conversation. Between Danzu's schemes and the council's illogic, the elderly man seized every opportunity for a serious discussion. First and foremost, I will not collaborate with the Uchiha. I have no rivalry with him because I am confident that I am superior. It will be a one-sided rivalry that will only serve to hold us both back. Second, I'm aware of who the highest scoring Kunoichi is. Haruno Sakura is a dead weight and a fangirl. She'll do nothing and expect me or Sasuke to save her, and knowing Sasuke, it'll be me putting my life and limb on the line for my teammates. Sorry, but I'm unable to do so. Furthermore, because she is a fangirl, she will always obey Uchiha's orders. Not to mention that she despises me for some reason. She tries to hit me every time I try to talk to her as a gesture of kindness. So, no, that team is not for me. However, I know of one team where I would fit in. Kuranai's group. Oh? And why would you be a good fit for Kuranai's team? And how do you know her team in the first place? Kuranai's best friend Gigi is Anko. I know she wants a scout team with Inazuka Kiba, Hayuga Hanada, and Aburame Shino on it. Kiba, on the other hand, can be replaced by me. Because of Hanada's Byakugan, I am unable to replace her. I can't replace Shino's ability to track down everyone he's ever met. I can, however, take Kiba's place. Thanks to Kiyubi, I've improved my tracking ability in the same areas where Kiba excels. However, I have tracking abilities that he does not. Because of my wings and eyes, I can fly over an enemy before engaging them and silently observe them. As you are aware, my fighting abilities far outnumber Kiba's. Last but not least, you're aware of Hinata's lack of confidence, correct? Well, she has a crush on me, and I can't deny that I like her. I don't know if it's love or a crush because I don't have anything to compare my feelings to, but I care about her. That way, I should be able to boost her confidence. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. Your diplomatic abilities are constantly improving. As is your logic. But there is one issue. Kakashi has asked for your assistance. Yes, he outranks Kuranai, but he does not outrank you. Inform him of everything. He probably thinks I'll start a feud with the Uchiha, which I'm not going to do. That, or he might try to make amends with Yandaimi or something, since I am his son and resemble him so much. That is, if he is unaware that I am his son. In any case, Kakashi's team with me will fail. Kiba might be a better option in this case. He has the entire alpha male mentality that will cause him to compete with Sasuke. Not only that, but he most likely has a lightning affinity. In contrast, I have wind. Could you please contact Kuranai and Anko so that we can finalize this? Obviously. Amy-san, please summon Yuhi Kuranai and Mitarashi Anko right away. Through the comlink, the Hokage inquired of his secretary. Comlink. Communications link, a highly sophisticated device that allows for long-distance communication. The sophistication stems from the fact that it is nearly impossible to tap into and listen in on conversations. Kuranai and Anko walked it after a few minutes, Anko still eating a dango stick. After greeting the Hokage and ruffling Naruto's hair, they inquired as to why they had been summoned. Before he began speaking, the elderly professor reset the sound barrier. Do you remember when Kiyubi's chakra was blasted five years ago? Do you recall what I said? That is not entirely correct. Please tell me about Naruto. Excellent. I am the Kiyubi no Jinchiriki, as you are aware. Namikaze Minato, the Yandaimi Hokage, sealed the demon that tried to level Konohagakure in my stomach. Now, let's go over what happened that day. Like every other birthday, I was fleeing a mob. They appeared to be more determined this time. 
They tortured me for about an hour before stabbing me on the seal with a chakra-infused blade. The seal is now extremely powerful, but also extremely delicate. As a result, the idiot freed Kiyubi. In all honesty, we could all be dead now. We certainly should be. Kiyubi could have escaped. What happened was that he didn't want to leave right away. No, he wanted to torment me by devouring my soul. Thus, he began a battle in my mindscape. If he won, I'd be absorbed in him for all eternity, watching as he committed unspeakable acts on those I cared about. However, despite his strength, Kiyubi made a minor error. We were in my mental landscape, my world, and my rules. I consider myself to be God. Yamanaka Inoichi San has mind walked me numerous times as a result of the beatings. He taught me a few things during those times. I used these items to defeat the Kiyubi. Another fascinating thing happened when the Kiyubi escaped. Yandaimi had sealed a kind of clone within me, to be activated if the seal ever broke in order to repair it. He appeared when the Kiyubi appeared. After the battle, I began absorbing the Kiyubi's power and claiming it as my own. Yandaimi revealed one secret to me at the time, my parentage. I won't say anything because I'm not supposed to know. Anyway, the Kiyubi's power became too much after a while. It is the demon's king. His knowledge accumulated over 10,000 years of existence would wipe my mind clean. His unstoppable power would destroy all of Hai no Kuni. Kiyubi would be reborn after his power entered a random animal. However, with my newfound power, I was able to prevent it. I resurrected Kiyubi and reformed him. I wiped away his hatred and bloodlust by binding him to my blood. Kiyubi is still alive, but only as a sensei to me. I have an inner friend. Most genjutsu are rendered ineffective as a result of him. He's actually quite friendly, more like a grumpy version of Iruka sensei. Because of his ties to my blood, he became my keke Genke. All of my children will house the Kiyubi and draw power from him. Of course, I've placed a number of seals on his power, making it impossible for him to take it. Also, as long as more than one member of my clan is alive, no one will be able to take Kiyubi away, which is just one of my clan's advantages. That day, however, I also gained something else. Kiyubi's Yuki is lethal. I, on the other hand, have developed some resistance to it since having him in me. It did, however, make my DNA unstable, but it was under mental control. In other words, I can change my body at will, among other things. For example, Uryu, my disguise. Naruto shifted into his disguise, enjoying Kurinai's shocked expression before shifting back. As Anko here knows, I can also form claws and have two dujutsu. The first gives me eagle vision, while the second gives me warmth. Also, thanks to Kiyubi, I can follow a scent as well as any in Azuka. The reason you were summoned here is straightforward. Kurinai san I'd like to join your squad. I am as capable a tracker as Kiba, have two unrivaled bloodlines, can adapt to almost any situation, have more chakra, combat capability, and, finally, because Hanada has a crush on me, I can help her overcome her confidence issues. I. A. Okay. Um Anko, are you telling the truth? Kurinai, stunned, muttered. Yep. Brat is correct. Nai Chan, don't look so freaked out. You haven't seen half of what he's capable of. I tell you, this kid is fantastic. Of course, but what about Kakashi? Sandame interrupted this time, Kakashi may be higher than you in Naruto-kun, but I am higher. If you agree, I can replace Kiba with Naruto-kun in your squad. That's great. What else can you do, Naruto-san? Aside from my disguise, I can form claws, wings that only allow me to glide for the time being, and I have increased strength, speed, and stamina. Right now? What exactly do you mean? You see, my bloodline is somewhat unique. It is a lineage of evolution. I have some. 
potential. The more I practice, the greater the potential. I can then use it to gain the aforementioned abilities. The more drastic the change, the more expensive it is. My claws, for example, are far more expensive than my disguise. Kiyubi believes that I will soon be able to fly. At best, I can expend a lot of wind chakra to keep flying. I. C. But why my team? Kakashi is older and wiser, having been taught by Yandaimi himself. He's also a pervert, a slacker, and always late. No. He is also forced to teach the Uchiha. One of the few people I can't stand, along with that jerk Danzo. No, I believe you'll be a better fit for me. Aside from that, I like Hanada, but if I ever approached her and was discovered. Well, I have no fear for myself because it is very difficult to kill me, but Hanada? I'd never let anyone hurt her like they did me. But this way, I can be close to her and still justify it. Excellent. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to need some sake after hearing all of this. And you still haven't heard Naruto's last secret, Nai Chan. But, please, be cautious. This is an S-level secret. Yes, Hokage-sama, Naruto, I'll be leaving soon. Are you coming, Anko? Certainly. Nai Chan, I'm finally getting you drunk. Fu 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 fu. Anko laughed almost incongruously as she dragged Kurenai to the nearest dango stand. That went rather well, Naruto-kun. Shouldn't you be at home right now? It's getting late, you know. Alright, Gigi, see you soon. Naruto then left and returned home. He was finally going to be a ninja. The first step toward earning people's respect. Would that his parents were still alive. Naruto meditated for an hour before going to bed, pushing these thoughts away. After the conversation with Kurenai, a few weeks passed and it was time for the final exams. Naruto still hadn't figured out how to solve his Bunshin problem. Anko had attempted to teach him Suchi Bunshin, but he lacked talent and couldn't learn it for the life of him. Still, Naruto went, hoping that if he did well enough in the other parts of the test, they would let him pass. After entering, Naruto greeted his friends, Kiba, Shikamaru, and Choji, glared at one Uchiha, ignored a pink-haired banshee, and smiled at a blushing Hyuga princess. As the teachers entered, the noise died down. Naruto had always had strange feelings about Mizuki, which Kiyubi confirmed, but he couldn't do anything because he didn't have any solid evidence. After the written test, which he aced thanks to Kiyubi, came the accuracy test. He scored high again after deciding to stop holding back, eliciting many suspicious looks from those around him, which he ignored. Then there was Taijutsu practice. Naruto faced Mizuki and defeated him in less than 10 seconds, despite Mizuki holding back far more than usual. He was doing well in the ninjutsu section until. Now, Naruto, I need you to do some bunshins for me. Ah. Iruka sensei you know I can't do bunshins. Okay, Naruto. I'm concerned you'll fail. Please wait a moment. Iruka sensei Everything else was a breeze for me. Aside from that, there's a reason I can't use Bunshin no Jutsu. I have an excess of chakra. I'd go get another Jutsu to replace it, but the library always kicks me out, and I can't exactly ask Hokage-sama to tutor me. I attempted to learn Suchi Bunshin, but my element is opposed, so. What good is a mere Bunshin? It makes no sound, has no smell, and is simply a waste of chakra. If you ask me, it's pointless. It's still a useful skill, Naruto, so give it a shot. Alright, alright, Aruka sensei Bunshin no Jutsu. Three clones appeared, all of them dead. Aruka exhaled a sigh. Naruto. You failed yet again. I apologize. Mizuki apologized in an attempt to gain the kid's favor. Naruto sat outside the academy after everything was finished. It was ridiculous. He could have used Katans and Futons, but they needed a simple useless Bunshin. The one skill he could never put to use. 
it was both stupid and unjust. He moved away, swallowing his pride, before being stopped by Mizuki. Don't be so depressed, Naruto. True, you did not pass the Bunshin exam, but because you aced everything else, I was able to pull some strings and we agreed on a makeup exam. The Forbidden Scroll is a scroll in the Hokage Library. If you obtain it and bring it to a specific point in the forest, you will pass as a shinobi mission simulation. You'll be demonstrating that you don't actually need the jutsu to be effective. So, do you want to go for it? Naruto recognized the man for who he truly was. A betrayer. There was no such test, or Sandame would have had him pass it by now. But an academy student's word versus a seasoned chunin? Except for Gigi, who would believe him? As a result, he had to catch him in the act. Naruto quickly agreed and went to Sandame to inform him of what was going to happen. The day came and went, and night fell. Naruto used his thermal vision to avoid the guards inside the compound and steal the scroll. He knew they wouldn't go too far, but it had to be plausible. When Kiyubi's voice echoed in his head, Naruto dashed to the woods. Hey Kit! Since you have the scroll, why not learn one of the jutsu contained within? They'll be strong, and you'll need a powerful jutsu to fight them off. Even as you are, you will not be able to defeat him easily. He isn't called a chunin for nothing. That, and his chakra, appear strange. Corrupted in some ways. He was also very reserved. Rather than drawing on my chakra, I should learn a jutsu and be safe. We don't know what will happen if you need it, because you've never needed it. If it gets out of hand, it could kill everyone. You're correct, Q. Besides, it will demonstrate to everyone that I am truly capable and not some last place finisher. Naruto arrived at a clearing, sat down, and began reading. Cage Bunshin, he read the first jutsu on the scroll. It was a powerful jutsu that required no control and only a lot of chakra, which Naruto knew he had plenty of. The secondary abilities of the Cage Bunshin were also fascinating. So, with no time to waste, he got to work learning it. After an hour, he had the jutsu down and was just waiting for the traitor to appear. A noise came from the side, and a figure fell from the trees. Except it wasn't Mizuki. Iruka was there. Naruto. What action did you take? I'm aware of what I did. Iruka sensei. I stole this scroll. Mizuki told me I had to pass the exam as a shinobi mission simulation. If I could do something that difficult, no matter what jutsus I knew, they should be sufficient for a genin. That was his justification, at least. I believe he is a traitor. Anyway, I waited for him here, but in the meantime, I learned jutsu. It's also a really cool one. Mizuki sensei has arrived. Iruka sensei, play dumb. What? What exactly do you mean, Naruto? Mizuki jumped confidently from the trees. Do you still not understand what that brat said? Iruka, you've always been a moron. I duped the baka into giving me the scroll. All I have to do now is kill you two and flee. What? Mizuki. He's a child. He's not a child. You already know who he is. He's. No way, Mizuki. Kiyubi, the demon lord. Naruto Kiyubi has never died. He was molded into the form of a child. You. You now understand why everyone despises you. And now you're going to die. Naruto simply raised an eyebrow and spoke calmly, Oh. Now is the time. Is that you, Kiyubi? Baka, I've known about him for five years. And I'm sure he'd prefer a grumpier version of Iruka. Iruka and Mizuki were both taken aback. Mizuki, on the other hand, recovered faster and threw his trusty Fuma shuriken at Naruto. Naruto raised his guard and prepared a kawarimi when Iruka jumped in front of him and took the blow. Mizuki burst out laughing, while Naruto looked stunned. How come Iruka sensei? Because you're one of my students. Sure. Kiyubi's deaths were those of a monster, but you're not a monster. 
You are my prized student. A self-assured Konoha Shinobi. Mizuki's laughter grew louder, and Naruto's blood began to boil. Naruto walked towards Mizuki, gently putting Uruka down while Uruka yelled at him to stop. Naruto simply looked behind him. Don't be concerned, Uruka sensei A whole village has tried to kill me numerous times, but I'm still alive. I'm not going to let a jerk like Mizuki get away with hurting those close to me. Mizuki, oi! Get off your ass, you cretin! Ha ha ha, what are your plans, Gaki? Tickle my fancy? No, you jerk! For what you did to Uruka sensei I'm going to break every bone in your body. Ha! As if. I'm a chunin, but my true talent is almost junin. You'll never be able to touch me. Really? So, how about right now? No jutsu for cage bunshin. Naruto clones appeared almost immediately. Mizuki and Uruka were stunned. Get em boys, Naruto said with a smirk. Battle cries rang out as Mizuki was beaten to a pulp. His ability was exceptional. But the shock and sheer magnitude of the situation overwhelmed him. In the meantime, Naruto was tending to Uruka's wound. A sound rippled through the clearing, followed by the soft thud of something stabbing flesh. Uruka watched in disbelief as a massive shuriken smacked Naruto in the back. Naruto, on the other hand, appeared. Irritated brat. You could have done a lot of damage to me. But I still have the power of Orochimaru-sama. I'm going to kill you. Mizuki emerged from the shadows, transformed. The only thing he shared with him before was his hair. Aside from that, he resembled a cross between a tiger and a human, minus the claws. Naruto turned around to face him. He was scared on the inside, but he couldn't show it. I see. That was the source of the taint in your chakra. Kiyubi knew you were aware. He forewarned me. But. Mizuki, you're not the only one with badass skills. Let me show you why no one can beat me these days. Naruto hurled a smoke bomb into the air. He immediately activated his thermal vision, allowing him to see Mizuki and form his claws. He charged, adrenaline coursing through his veins. The smoke-filled area was turned into a battleground. Mizuki was easily visible to Naruto, but Mizuki was faster, more experienced, and used his scent to detect Naruto. Naruto dodged a swipe and countered against Mizuki's other arm. He leapt forward, using his opponent as a springboard, and leapt into the air. Twisting his body and extending his arms, he transformed into a claw twister, cutting Mizuki a couple of times before ducking. Except for one blow to the brow, none of the blows were dangerous. Mizuki grabbed Naruto's chest and threw him against a tree. Naruto twisted his body and jumped off the tree, one claw extended and the other cocked back in case he missed. He struck true this time and was rewarded with a painful cry. Dropping into a handstand, he spun around quickly, knocking Mizuki back with his incredible strength for his age. Mizuki charged again, angrier by the second, but even with his increased speed, he couldn't kill the demon brat. Naruto jumped from his handstand, landed on his feet, sidestepped a wild swipe, ducked another, parried a third, and grabbed Mizuki's hand with his parrying left hand before bringing his right claw in a swipe and cutting the hand off. Mizuki stumbled back, screamed in pain. Naruto prepared himself and charged when he saw his opportunity. Mizuki swiped in front of him, but Naruto rolled underneath, twisted around, and cut the muscles and tendons behind Mizuki's legs with his claws. Continuing his spin, Naruto struck Mizuki's spine with his left claw, followed by a powerful punch to the temple with his right hand. The beastified traitor eventually passed out, the pain, shock, blood loss, and drug catching up with him. Naruto let go of his claws and noticed the cloud had almost vanished. Iruka was taken aback. His old friend betrayed Orochimaru and attempted to murder him. The dead last then beat him with an advanced Bunshin Jutsu. When the traitor reappeared, stronger and deformed, the same dead last fought Mizuki, 
a skilled chunin, inside a smoked area. Once again, the academy's worst student triumphed. He couldn't stop wondering. WHO was this kid? Nonetheless, Aruka was pleased with his student. He was fighting for all the right reasons. Naruto approached his sensei slowly. Aruka sensei, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help but fight him and possibly kill him. There is a reason I use the smoke bomb, but Sandame is aware of it, so don't be concerned. Anyway, if you're okay, I'd like to treat the traitor's wounds, assuming he's still alive. After all, the interrogation team will have many questions for him to answer. Iruka nodded as Naruto administered as much first aid as he could to help Mizuki survive. Anko would have a great time with that traitor. Iruka approached his former friend's barely breathing body slowly. When he saw the vicious wounds Naruto had inflicted, he gasped. Mizuki would never be more than a cripple again. Even if he managed to escape, he'd be worthless. Anbu appeared out of nowhere. As the aged Hokage appeared, they quickly dispatched the traitor. Naruto took the scroll, knelt before the Hokage, and handed it over. How did your mission go, Naruto-kun? Hokage-sama, it went well. I defeated and disabled the traitor. The scroll is safe, and I now have the one shinobi skill I could never master. Please excuse me while I... Naruto-kun, of course. This is your Hitai 8. I'll personally return the scroll. Go get some sleep. You deserve it. Naruto nodded and went home to shower and sleep. Iruka, on the other hand, observed Sandame. Excuse me, Hokage-sama, but what did you mean by a mission? Naruto-kun recognized Mizuki's intentions and entered my office. I assigned him a B-rank mission to deceive and apprehend Mizuki. Before you ask, yes, I am aware of Naruto True Kun's level as well as the weapons he used to defeat the traitor, and I can assure you that he is in perfect health. Call it a Keke Jenke in your heart if it helps you relax. Whatever happened, Naruto-kun remains Naruto-kun, the same boy you met in the academy. He simply held back to avoid drawing attention to himself. What happened here is also an S-rank secret that will not be repeated. Mizuki never changed his form, and Naruto's clones defeated him. Now, I believe you need to go to the hospital and then rest, correct? Hello, Hokage-sama. Naruto arrived at the academy the next day, his black Hitai 8 proudly displayed on his head. Ignoring the surprised looks, he waved to his friends and sat down next to Hinata, who immediately turned red and nearly fainted. Naruto finished her with a friendly smile. Naruto chuckled after she fainted, with Kiyubi gagging at the cuteness of the whole thing. After waiting for the teacher, Naruto gently woke up Hanada, who had almost fainted due to the contact. After Aruka entered, he delivered his annual and well-practiced speech, congratulating everyone who had passed. A speech that was cut short by a screeching banshee who asked why Naruto was here after he had failed. Before shocking his class, Naruto simply smiled at her. Because Haruno, my failure in the previous test, was merely a performance. Something I used in a B-ranked mission to capture a Chunin-ranked traitor. In other words, Hokage-sama promoted me and ordered me to fail. So keep quiet. Is this correct, Aruka-sensei? Why would Naruto Baka accept the mission? It is obvious that Sasuke-kun would perform far better than. Because you banshee the mission that someone must fail. Or are you stupid, blind, and ignorant? The mission would have failed if your precious Sasuke-kun had failed because it would have made no sense. I, on the other hand, was flawless. I concealed all of my potential and allowed dimwits like you to see only what I wanted you to see. In case you're wondering, I solo defeated a Junin-ranked shinobi. Iruka sensei can confirm it because he was present. Ha. Huh. I had a feeling. You had Iruka sensei fight for you while you hid like you were the last man standing. Sakura Haruno. I will fail you if you do not stay silent. 
As Naruto had stated, I was now present. However, I was careless and suffered a spine injury before the battle began. Naruto not only defended me, but he also safeguarded the village treasure, forbidden scroll, learned a B-ranked jutsu, and defeated an opponent who would have easily defeated me. So take a seat right now. Oh Naruto, with everything that happened last night, I forgot to thank you. Do you want to go out for ramen later? It's my pleasure. Sure thing, Aruka sensei but only after I've met with my team. Sakura spoke up once more, so what? Sasuke-kun would have fared far better. Iruka, who was still in pain from yesterday, had finished her ranting, Haruno. Sit down right now. Naruto is a true hero. He was hand-picked by the Hokage and possesses abilities that you wouldn't believe if you saw them. Even if he possessed the Sharingan, Naruto here could easily defeat your Sasuke-kun. So stop talking and take a seat. BB but. Kiba stepped in this time. Naruto has a strong odor of blood on him. It resembles Mizuki's but also a cat. Naruto corrected him, saying, Tiger, to be precise. But, yes, Mizuki was the traitor. Sigh asterisk. Once dried on your skin, blood scent is extremely difficult to remove. Anyway, Aruka sensei, how about we ignore the Banshee and his pals and head to team placements? Team 1 is, indeed. After about 5 minutes, under Hitaki Kakashi, Team 7 will consist of Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, Girlish Squeal Asterisk, and Inazuka Kiba, Sound of Head Hitting a Desk Asterisk. Uzumaki Naruto, Hayuga Hanada, Soft Thud as Hanada fainted from excitement Asterisk, and Abarame Shino will form Team 8 under Yuhi Kuranai. Team 9 is still in existence. Yamanaka Ino, Narashikamaru, and Akamichi Choji make up Team 10 under the leadership of Serutobi Asuma. Iruka left the class after finishing the placements. Naruto, on the other hand, expressed his condolences to Kiba before departing to meet his team. While Sakura repeatedly yelled her victory over Ino, Sasuke brooded. Kiyubi wanted to escape Naruto's mind and kill Sakura. He wasn't evil anymore, but his ears were sensitive, and her screeching was too much for him. Naruto mercifully sent Chakra to his ears, not to improve but to dampen his hearing, earning the Demon Lord's gratitude. Kuranai came in later, attracting the attention of every male except our resident brooder, and after introducing herself, she took her team to a dango stand to get to know each other. So, now that we're all here, how about we introduce ourselves? I'll get started. Yuhi Kuranai here, a new Junin. I enjoy genjutsu, tea, and spending time with my friends. Arrogant people, sexists, and perverts irritate me. In the near future, I hope to form you into a formidable infiltration scouting squad and, eventually, a family. Blondie, how about you? Kuranai began after they had ordered their food and beverages. Okay. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Pranks, jokes, spending time with friends, ramen, and training are all things I enjoy. I dislike arrogant fools, people who pass judgment before getting to know someone, and people who refuse to change their minds no matter how stupid they are. My ambitions for the future? Gaining Konoha's respect and becoming a powerful shinobi in order to protect what is important to me maybe I'll revive my clan later but that'll be in the distant future. My name is Abarame Shino. My interests include insects and the discovery of new species of insects. I despise fire and bright sunlight. In the future, I hope to discover new types of insects to add to my clan and eventually become clan leader. My name is Hayuga Hanada. Naruto-kun and flower pressing are two of my favorite things. I dislike people who pass judgment on others, and I want to be clan leader and remove my clan's seal. Naruto was impressed by Hinata's ability to avoid stuttering for the first time in as long as he had known her. Kuranai decided to brief them on tomorrow after they finished their meals. Okay, team, the real genin test is tomorrow. Before you ask, that test was designed to determine who was capable of becoming a genin. 
Why waste resources when everyone else didn't get a chance to pass? Rest up and meet me at training ground 8 at 8 a.m. sharp. I must warn you that your chances of success are only 33%, assing. Naruto smiled at her and said, it shouldn't be any more difficult than taking down a Junin Kurenai sensei. Consider the challenge completed. Whatever you throw at us, we will overcome. I recommend that you get some rest because we're not going to make it easy on you. Can I speak with you briefly before you leave? Of course, Naruto, come with me. Naruto stepped to the side and addressed his future sensei. Kurenai sensei. I thought it was also appropriate to inform you that I learned yet another scouting skill yesterday. In the hour it took Aruka to find me, I learned the cage bunshin. Do you see why I insisted on coming to your squad rather than Kakashi's? My cage bunshin will have every ability I have, as well as the ability to think independently and transfer any knowledge of their actions to me. Last but not least, Kiyubi is the creator of the genjutsu art, so I asked him for a couple of genjutsu. He gave me as much information as he could, but because he never used hand seals, that's something you'll have to work on. Whether I pass or fail, I'll ask Kiyubi to assist you with your genjutsu. Also, I'm not going to fight you all tomorrow. I was able to fight all out yesterday because Aruka couldn't see due to a smoke bomb, but I don't want my teammates to know about my abilities if they aren't going to be on my team. I trust them both, but years of getting beaten up and a few nasty backstabs have made me paranoid. But, just so you know, that doesn't mean I'm useless. Kiyubi and Anko have both thoroughly trained me. Please don't be too surprised. Hello, Naruto-kun. Don't be concerned about me. Return to your team and conserve your energy. I see. See you tomorrow, Sensei. Kuranai then abandoned the team while Naruto returned to them. Okay. Guys and gals, I think I found some information about tomorrow. We'll be fighting her in some form or another tomorrow, based on her stance and words. We're in luck because she's famous for her genjutsu. Shino, you have your bugs, they're immune to genjutsu, right? Hanada, you have your Byakugan. Finally, I can constantly expel chakra from my body to form a sort of armor against genjutsu, as I recall you saying at one point that, and I have some skills that I haven't demonstrated in class. Kuranai Sensei is aware of them, but I hope she will forget about them in the heat of battle. That is correct, Naruto-san. We are all protected from illusions to some extent, but she is still a journalist. That I am aware of. I doubt she practices Taijutsu. She doesn't appear to be the type, and she doesn't carry a sword or other weapon. So we're left with Fuinjutsu and Ninjutsu. Personally, I'd rather have her as a Ninjutsu opponent because seals can be very unpredictable if the enemy has time to prepare for us, and she's had weeks to prepare. Of course, her being a journalist means she's already bad news, so we'll have to decide on team tactics. The new team then stayed for hours discussing possible strategies, with Naruto making sure Hanada gets her turn in the discussion and frequently asking for her opinion. Hanada felt good because her longtime crush had noticed her, and Shino was pleasantly surprised to have a capable team with him. Naruto went off to train for a few hours, then quickly home for a shower before going to Ichiraku's to eat Aruka's wallet with his ramen consumption. Overall, it was a good day that was improving. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.